Welcome back to Fast Market here on the Schwab Network. It's time for our cash tag segment. For that, let's bring in our guest, uh, Megan Brantley. She's the vice president of research at Likefolio. Welcome back to the show, Megan. Thanks for having me, guys. All right, so we're talking raw storage. We had a discussion earlier this week uh, with Landon on um, TJX. That stock's been kind of muted after hitting all-time highs uh, on this move. And this stock's actually down on the year. Uh, up year over year, but uh, down this year, seeing some weakness here. What kind of data do you have for us here, Megan? Yeah, so whenever we look at this name, I think it's nice that we have kind of a benchmark with TJX as we approach this earnings because we can kind of look and say, okay, how did we expect TJ Maxx to perform and how how did the market react? And now we can kind of gauge appropriately with raw stores. And when we look at this name, this is one that we just see overall a bit weaker than TJ Maxx. So whenever we talk about overall consumer mind share, TJ Maxx is the clear leader in this space. I think it comprises um, more than 90% of mention volume when you look at TJ Maxx and its subsidiaries versus Ross stores and its subsidiaries in Burlington. And so I think that this is, you know, the first sign whenever you look at this consumer happiness chart, you would think that raw stores would be a bit higher considering they're operating a little bit more niche and have a smaller amount of consumer mentions and consumer mind share overall. The fact that they're trailing and we actually see consumer happiness levels down by about seven points year over year. So that gives us a little bit of pause for concern. And when we dig into mentions, what we're seeing are a lot of consumers who are talking about maybe they went to raw stores, but they weren't able to find what they were looking for. And I know that last quarter, the company indicated that it was a little bit cautious, especially among its low-income consumer base, as they saw discretionary spend starting to pull back because of, you know, high housing and high gas prices and high food prices and all of these things that were weighing on its low and lower income consumer. So for us, when we look at this, we see this name as perhaps not performing as well as TJ Maxx. And so that gives us a little bit of pause for concern heading into this earnings report. Hey, Megan, when I look at, you know, the last quarter earnings report from Ross Stores, everything looked great, you know, in terms of uh, the numbers for the for that prior quarter for, you know, they did a dividend increase, they did a 2.1 billion stock buyback, everything was great except the guidance, and there was a lot of cautiousness in the guidance. And then you look at the consumer sentiment surveys that have come out since they last reported, and part of me thinks, okay, well, the CEO probably has their ear to the ground closest in terms of what the consumer is doing. On the other hand, do you think this potentially sets up raw stores since the stock is down 12% from their last quarter earnings report for a low bar that they could beat? I think that that's a really good point. I think that that, if you have a bullish thesis heading to this name, that's what you're betting on is that the bar is low. And so it's going to be easier for them to clear. For us, what's probably most concerning is that happiness level that I talked about. Because when we actually dive into mentions, we're seeing consumers find less value. And so for a company that operates in this discount space, um, you want to see them finding value here. You want to see them hunting deals. And we're starting to see signs that maybe consumers are hunting less deals. I also think that whenever you look at um, this name in a competitive landscape, we see TJX benefiting a lot from this trade down effect. So perhaps higher income consumers are now trading down to some of these, you know, off price retailers. And we see them more likely to trade down into a name like a TJ Maxx versus a name like a Ross store. So for us, that's a little bit of positive for concern. Um, on a positive side, we do see them gaining some traction when it comes to overall web traffic. And while we don't really expect them to necessarily be garnering, um, a, you know, a ton in e-commerce, this is something where consumers might be going to check out, you know, store hours or sales or, um, you know, locations and things like that. And so this could be a positive sign that consumers are checking out Ross. But overall, you know, we have a little bit of a mixed bag whenever you consider happiness, the declining levels of happiness there um, and just relative underperformance versus peers. And Megan, you know, I always I always look at like TJ Maxx, especially raw stores, maybe in the uh, in the same vein that they need foot traffic, you know, and uh, if consumer is trading down, these stores are going to benefit from that. Have you guys seen any overall data on foot traffic? Because I saw your year over year change in visits here. Raw stores is actually leading TJX. But are you seeing overall foot traffic traffic improving in the retail space as a whole? 
you know, we actually do have mention volume up year over year for all of the names that are on that chart, whatever you're talking about, TJ Maxx, Burlington, or Ross, but we don't see Ross as strong, again, as those peers. So, again, the bar is low. You could make a case for maybe it will clear a low bar, but we're not seeing extremely compelling data um, in a positive direction that would give us enough conviction to have a bullish outlook heading into this earnings. Our data does skew slightly positive, but we're still in that neutral camp. Still neutral earnings score on this one? Yeah, it's almost exactly neutral. We're at a two. Um, another thing that I think the company we haven't hit on is the DD's discount. That banner was kind of struggling. So we looked into that as well. And we're not seeing a ton of traction there that they were able to turn things around. So that's another kind of a reason for a pause for us on the neutral outlook. Yep, they've got the Ross Dress for Less and DD's discount names under their umbrella. Uh, also, a lot of free cash flow for this one, though, also. All right. All right, great stuff. Great data, as always, Megan. Have a great day. Thanks, guys. You too. All right, that's Megan Brantley, Vice President of Research at Likefolio, breaking down the data for us here on Ross Stores. You know, that move in um, 